So today we're going to talk about the Capitol Hill building incident here on January 6th, and um, I've made a recording this morning right on waking, so my voice will sound a little sleepy at first. And then at another point, I made another recording where I'm wide awake, so the difference is a little obvious. But we'll go ahead with it anyway. I'm going to put these in so that uh, I can hear what you're hearing. And uh, here we go. Sixth, we had a large crowd of people pushed up like a river to the Capitol building while Congress was in session. One of the things that they were supposed to be doing was counting the electoral votes. And since they've been objected to, they were being debated. No, they were supposed to be debated, but they were going through the same motions that they always go through, which is a show of debate without results, without any kind of significant action. Now, how are we as Christians to look on this? There were many people who called themselves Christians who were involved in this. They made it into the Capitol building, and I think four or five people were killed on both sides, the police and the people who gotten in. I understand there were hundreds that had gotten into the Capitol building. All of the congressmen who were spoken to afterwards, even Rand Paul, um, condemned the violence and said that that's not who we are and that's not how we settle things. However, I went and read the Constitution again to see if that was true. And the Constitution does give us a right Actually, uh, not just the Constitution, but the in Declaration of Independence very specifically mentions it, that uh, we do have a right when the government is unfixable. So um, it's there in our documents. So to have congressmen saying that we don't have a right to use violence against the government, it's not accurate. It's what they hope doesn't happen because they are the government. And of course, you know, if you're the government, you don't want violence against you. Well, but if they're unwilling or unable to fix it, according to our documents, Americans have the right to overthrow the government and replace it. I'm not advocating that, so don't take me wrong. I'm just saying what our documents say. Let's continue. To revolution, when the government is broken beyond repair. And one of the things demonstrated here in Trump pushing the process all the way through was that the system is broken on all levels, all the way from the county to the state to the federal, in all three branches, in the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. That's true. That's actually, that's the main point of what has gone on from November 3rd to January 6th. That if there's a takeaway, if there's one takeaway, is that, you know, whatever you think about Trump, whatever you think about, you know, this whole situation, you know, what he and his team were claiming, you know, uh, and what you think was real, whether you think they were had valid complaints or you think they were just trying to steal the election themselves, whatever you think. It's not really relevant because the main takeaway has nothing to do with either side on that. The main takeaway is what I just said, is that by Trump doing this, he's proven that the system is broken. Even if his claims are, are false, even if he doesn't really have evidence, whether he does or he doesn't, that's not the point. The point is that he couldn't get it heard that none of our branches or government at any level wanted to entertain the possibility that our system is broken, that it, there may be fraud, widespread fraud, and maybe even foreign powers influencing the election through corrupting our officials. I'm not saying this would happen. I'm saying that they weren't willing to entertain that issue. And the big media the big social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, are the worst to blame for this because they were censoring, censor, 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 censor. 
And they were censoring on things where they were actually facts, but they were censoring them because it didn't fit with their narrative and what they wanted. So they were contributing to the brokenness of our system. And the fact that we couldn't do anything about them during that time just absolutely proves that it's completely broken. So that's the takeaway. And what becomes of that is kind of scary because it's absolutely obvious that the system is broken. Now, can we fix it without revolution? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. But my business is something a little different than that. And you're going to find out as we go along here. And your business too. They had tons of evidence. Tons of evidence. In this Understand that evidence is not proof. Evidence only says that there is good reason to investigate. Okay, it doesn't prove anything. It just says that there's there's enough indications that there's something probably wrong here that we need to investigate. That's what evidence means. Okay, so understand that. Indisputable evidence. Indisputable. Thousands evidence. of witnesses signed yeah. affidavits. It's true. Concrete video. Absolutely. And the courts refused. I downloaded it. Refused to hear it. Yeah. It's true. Governors were circumventing the legislative branch who had the sole right for establishing the laws and the rules governing the election process. Absolutely. We have Which makes it unconstitutional, the election unconstitutional. Because the governors and the secretaries of state have no authority whatsoever to make rules governing the elections at the state level. Only the legislatures do. And that's what our constitution, the federal constitution, sets in place. So any laws have to be run through the legislature and approved there. They cannot just be made up by governors or secretaries of state. And that's what was happening. So, uh, and what's absolutely crazy is that no one wanted to address that. No one wanted to address that. And that indicates that they are unwilling to submit to the Constitution as the governing law of the land. Now, I, I'm not making conclusions from that. I'm just saying that is a fact. Those are facts. There's no nothing to dispute there. Those are facts. Now, maybe you don't agree that it should be that way, but that means then that you are anti-constitutional. And you then, you know, either say we don't we don't need to obey the constitution or we need to change the constitution. And that's fine. That that's your view, that's your view. But at least admit it. Don't say that I obey the constitution, I believe in the constitution, and then espouse something that's contrary to the constitution. Because then you're a liar and you're sinning. And if you're claiming to be a brother in the Lord. We must have nothing to do with you then. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Serious problems. No one to this day can answer clearly why these things happen. And it happened in each of the swing states. And the only thing that one can conclude is that there was corruption in the process. And we found out later, which was a little bit buried, was that uh, Mark Zuckerberg dumped money into at least one of the states. He dumped more money than the United States pays total for the entire election in the entire United States into one state, actually select counties in that state in order to manipulate the elections. To corrupt the electoral process. Yeah. That was proven. That was not something disputed. Yeah. That was hidden by the mainstream media yeah. but if you've got your information from youtube you could see videos you could see papers you could actually see concrete evidence and you don't have to listen to the talking heads trying to convince you one way or the other mm -hmm. you just look at what what is there now understand that i'm not i'm not advocating revolution i'm not advocating violence i'm not advocating uh, a view that 
uh, there was corruption and that the vote was stolen and that we should have President Trump as president or the president-elect uh, Biden, because he's not been sworn in yet, is uh, not president. I'm not advocating anything of any of those things. What I want to do here is address this from the viewpoint of a Christian, is that um, what are we supposed to do? As followers of Jesus Christ, what are we supposed to do? Well, we are to mind our own business. That's going to make some of you mad. But we are to mind our own business. We are to work with our hands to provide for our families. We are to pray for our leaders. And I think that this is where the ball was dropped. And I think that this puts it squarely on the shoulders of the church. I think the failure in our nation rests with the church. And some of you are going to call me the accuser of the brethren. No, I'm not. I'm a leader in the church, honestly and humbly evaluating us, yeah. me included, that we stopped praying for our leaders, honestly praying for our leaders, and we took sides instead of praying for our leaders. Because everyone has the possibility of repenting of their sin, even Joe Biden. For those of you who think that Joe Biden is the devil, he's not the devil, he's a human being. It means he has a possibility of repenting of his sins. Okay, so before we go further, I want to read you a fresh translation I made for this video from 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 8. And this is the common English translation. Uh, I'll put it up on the rooted word here. Um, well, probably not tonight. I mean, it's night time, my time. So probably tomorrow. It says, Certainly I'm calling alongside, first and foremost of all things, to do beggings. This is towards God. To do beggings. Wishings forward. Standings to requests, standings in requests ready for them to come to be. To do true, cheerful graciousness over all human beings, over sovereigns who pace anywhere, and over all the ones existing in a holding over us, in order that we may lead through a life that is both tranquil and a holding of where one sits. We are leading through in every true honor and graveness. For those are beautifully good, beautifully good and acceptable in the grace in the gaze. For those are beautifully good and acceptable in the gaze of the Savior, our God, who desires all human beings to be saved and to come into a thorough knowledge of truth. For there is one God, one also mediator of God and human beings, a human being, Christ Jesus, the one giving to each a thing to prevent loosening over all the evidence to an occasion itself, into which I am placed a herald and an apostle set fast off of. I am laying forth truth in Christ. I am not lying, an instructor of ethnicities in persuasion and truth. Certainly I myself will the men themselves to wish forward in prayer in every spot they occupy, lifting up righteous hands at a space from both a desire to stretch out and a thorough inventory. Meaning that when we are praying in every spot that we're occupying and lifting up righteous hands, that we are separated from the desire to reach out, to stretch out, like to get, to grab, or we're at a, a distance from taking meticulous inventory of other people. He's describing what this cheerful graciousness includes when he says to do true cheerful gracious, graciousness over all human beings, over sovereigns, and over all the ones existing in the holding over us that we are to keep away from this desire to, to stretch out and grab or desire to take meticulous inventory of them. That's the cheerful graciousness instead of those two. But notice, 
I myself will desire, like intend, the men themselves is men. It's not human beings here. Anthropos is human beings. Under is men. And this is men. I myself will the men themselves to wish forward in prayer in every spot they occupy, lifting up righteous hands in the cheerful graciousness, true cheerful graciousness over all human beings, especially sovereigns and those who are holding over us. So I wanted to read that before we continue so you understand the context of what what the Lord is speaking to me about here, what I'm trying to explain to you about Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Let's keep going. I'll back up just a little bit. You can see as a possibility of repenting of his sins. Have you prayed for that? <clears throat> this is a man who has decades of experience of corruption. Have you prayed for his repentance? Joe Biden. Have you prayed for humility he has been humbled because of his age he's gone through a lot of humbling things but whether he has humility or not i don't think so i think that shows in the times that he lashes out at people and uh because he's in the public eye all the time a lot of that's caught on camera i'm sure many of you lash out but since you're not in the public eye it's not caught on camera so i think if you had some mercy and understood the situation with someone who's a high profile person that uh, you, you might have more mercy towards Joe Biden. Well, what I'm saying is that all right, we've seen footage, or maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but there's footage on the internet that, that tries to show off how Joe Biden has, has lashed out in anger, you know, um, to people who have asked certain questions and he's been snotty towards him. Um, and my point is that when you're under the microscope like that all the time, it will be easy for someone sometime in your days, every day, throughout every week, throughout every month, throughout every year, to find a few times where you lose it. I mean, not like really lose it, but you're a little mean, you know? And you're not under the microscope like Joe Biden is. And Joe Biden's been under the microscope for decades. So, because before Trump's presidency, he was vice president for eight years. So he was under my, the microscope for those eight years. And before that, you know, was, I don't know if he was a senator or a representative. I think he was a senator. But anyway, he was under the microscope then also. And um, so to be under the microscope so often, you know, there are going to be times where you're going to lose it, especially when you've got such a schedule as these guys do. So it's not surprising, you know. And I know you don't see uh, everyone who's in those positions being shown off as lashing out, but not everyone's running as president, you know. And so when you're running as president, well, then everyone's really watching you and the other side is looking, looking for something to hold against you at that moment, to leverage against you. So it's it's a whole different dynamic. And if you realize that, then you really should have some dose of mercy towards a person, knowing that they, he has enemies who are meticulously looking for anything that they can use against him. The same is true for Trump. So, but you have to you have to hold that dose of mercy towards them because of that particular situation. Let's keep going. This is that they like to flaunt. On the internet including trump who is definitely full of pride everyone knows that that's why people hate trump is yeah. because of his pride yeah. and um and yet you know some of what trump has is confidence which is good but i want to hate trump because of his pride but uh he's such a good manager uh that i mean he he does things and he gets certain things done of course he brags about it more than anyone you know, so that kind of, you know, makes it feel like it cancels the good out. So, and I want to hate him because of his pride. But when I see that he's effective, then it's difficult to hate him. But it's also difficult to love him. So, it's a very unique beast. 
so to speak. It's his pride that people really despise and that causes his downfall. If Biden is going around calling himself a Christian, then we can judge him as a brother and look and say, is he in sin or is he not? If he is in sin, we are to have nothing to do with him. Does Biden call himself a Christian? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. He absolutely does. Yeah. He calls himself a Catholic. Now, some of you are going to start screaming, Catholic? Catholic is not Christian. Catholics of the devil. Catholic is the Antichrist. Catholic is the devil's church. No, 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 no. Where do you think the Protestant church came from? Protestants are Catholics who are reformed to follow different values in some ways. But in almost every other way, we are Catholic. Yeah. Our doctrine matches the Catholics mm -hmm. in nearly every point. There are only a few points where it doesn't. Yeah, but those are critical points. Yeah, but on many of those points, we are wrong. That doesn't make the Catholics right because they've gone through many changes since the Protestant Reformation. They themselves have become corrupt in the way, in different ways than the Protestant churches have become corrupt. Nevertheless, they claim to be Christians, and that makes them under the authority of the leaders of the church, the church with capital C, the real church, as I am, a leader of the church. And so I... I need to. I'm obligated to cast judgment on a man such as Joe Biden, but only not as president, not in politics, but as a brother in Christ. And if he is in sin, then he is to be put out of fellowship. We are to disregard him as being in fellowship with us and for Trump as well, because Trump makes a show of being a Christian. Now, I've never heard him say that he's a Christian. I've heard him say he has respect for the Bible and for God, but I've never, ever heard him claim to be a Christian right. or Catholic. His wife is Catholic. So I would look at Trump and I would consider him outside the church. Mm -hmm. I don't consider him to be claiming to be a brother in Christ. Biden openly and clearly claims to be a brother in Christ, and he's, he's in sin. I'm not going to say he's not a brother in Christ, but I'm going to say that he's in sin, and he needs to be put out of fellowship. And also many sincere Catholics agree that That's he right. should be refused communion. That's right. So, and Pelosi. Pelosi claims to be Catholic. She mm. claims to be a sister in Christ, and she is in sin. She is to be put out of fellowship. And every one, every leader, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, I don't care who they are in terms of politics, in terms of social values, that if they claim, if they claim openly to be a brother or sister in Christ in any way, and they are in sin, that they are to be put out of fellowship. We are to have nothing yeah. to do with them. That's right. That also means not voting for them. So. That's from 1 Corinthians 5, where Paul mentions that. He goes into detail on it. I'm not taking a side. I'm not saying I'm for that Trump and I'm against. I'm for means not voting for them. Claim openly to be a brother or sister in Christ in any way. And they are in sin. That They are to be put out of fellowship. We are to have nothing to do with them. That also means not voting for them. So I'm not taking a side. I'm not saying... So in that case, by this reasoning, that uh, if you're going to vote, then you shouldn't you shouldn't have voted for Biden. I mean, if you knew that he was in sin and that he claims to be a brother in Christ, then you shouldn't vote for him. You shouldn't have any affiliation with him whatsoever. But then the question is, well, but if if Trump is not a brother in Christ, then should I vote for him? What does light have to do with darkness? That's a good point. And so I didn't vote. I didn't vote for either one of them. So I decided I wasn't going to share in the sins of either one of them, whatever the outcome was. Let's continue here. To do with him. Does Biden call himself a Christian? Yes, he does. I think he I absolutely does. Back a little bit. Almost every other way, we are Catholic. Our doctrine judgment yeah. mm -hmm. on a man such as Joe Biden heard him say that he's a Christian. Okay. I've heard him say he has respect That's for the Bible, okay. for God, but I've never ever heard him claim to be a Christian or a Catholic. His wife is Catholic. So I would look at Trump and I would consider him outside the church. I don't consider him to be claiming to be a brother in Christ. 
Biden openly and clearly claims to be a brother in Christ, and he's he's in sin. I'm not going to say he's not a brother in Christ, but I'm going to say that he's in sin, and he needs to be put out of fellowship. And also many sincere Catholics agree that he should be refused communion. So, and Pelosi. Pelosi claims to be Catholic. She claims to be a sister in Christ, and she is in sin. She is to be put out of fellowship. And every one, every leader, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, I don't care who they are in terms of politics, in terms of social values, that if they claim, if they claim openly to be a brother or sister in Christ in any way, and they are in sin, that they are to be put out of fellowship, we are to have nothing to do with them. That also means not voting for them. So I'm not taking a side. I'm not saying I'm for Trump and I'm against Biden and this and this and that and that. No, because we are to mind our own business. We are not to concern ourselves with things too great for ourselves. This is part of humility. We need to take this stand. We need to maintain this stand. We need to maintain humility because God gives graciousness, cheerful graciousness to the humble. He opposes the proud. You wonder, how could Trump not succeed in this? How could he succeed in this? With the sheer volume of pride that he was walking around with and demonstrating on his sleeve. Because that principle applies to everyone, regardless of whether they're a Christian or not, a Jew or not, whatever their status is with the Lord. It doesn't matter. That's a principle. It doesn't say God opposes the proud believer. It says God opposes the proud, but gives grace, cheerful graciousness to the humble, to the humble, all who are humble. And he opposes all who are proud. Just keep going. Did he n- not fail in How this? could he not fail? God opposes the proud. Yeah. God mm-hmm. opposes the proud. Yeah. And when you watched Biden... Most of the time, he was refraining. He was holding himself back. This is a practice of humility. And I'm convinced he learned that in the Catholic Church. Mm. Now, you say, but Biden was sinning. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he was, yeah. I know that uh, you don't like many of the things that he said. And and he was doing doublespeak like any politician does, which means lying. So he was sinning, but he was demonstrating a mark, at least, of humility. Whether he was actually humble in his heart or not, I don't know. But God opposes the proud, but gives cheerful graciousness to the humble. I'm not saying that Biden was humble. I'm only saying he had the appearance of humility. I don't know. I have no idea. But definitely Trump was demonstrating without restraint pride towards the end. He was demonstrating humility. I believe the the last speech he made, telling the the people who had broken into the Capitol building to go home and to to be at peace. I believe that was humility. Yeah. So there, there is hope for Trump. I I don't believe that uh, he should be written off. Uh, first off, I don't believe he's uh, claimed to be a Christian. We can't judge him for that pride. He's outside the church. Um, but we do know on principle that God opposes the proud. And um, he gives grace, cheerful graciousness to the humble. And if you're not humble, and he desires to give you that cheerful graciousness, he knows that you need to be humbled first. So he may test you. He may test your heart to see. And maybe this was a testing of Trump's heart. Maybe what comes out of this is Trump's salvation, where he, he truly becomes a believer, a Christian, maybe he's not going to live very long. Very long. Maybe something's going to happen. He's going to die of, of an illness or, or something. Who knows? We don't know what's ahead for each of these men. But God knows this, and he, he knows what needs to happen to save their souls. It could be through this, through Biden being given all this power, that he gets more wicked more evil. And he is claiming to be a brother in Christ. And he gets more wicked and more evil. And he turns against Christians, attacking them under the advice of wicked people such as Harris, Pelosi. So we don't know what will happen with Biden. He may remain outside of fellowship and end up being condemned eternally. 
We don't know. Or it could be that it gets so wicked that even he is repulsed by it and he is broken down to tears over it and repents and ends up fighting against the wickedness that he created. We don't know. We have no idea how this is going to play out. That's why we need to be praying for our leaders. We Absolutely. have to be praying for our leaders. And you say, well, we have to be praying for everyone. Yes, but we're, we're commanded to pray for our leaders. The men are especially, and we haven't. We have failed in it. That's what I just read to you from 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 8. Certainly I'm calling alongside first and foremost of all things to do beggings, wishings forward, standings and requests ready for them to come to be to do true, cheerful graciousness over all human beings, over sovereigns who pace anywhere, and over all the ones existing in a holding over us, in order that we may lead through a life that is both tranquil and a holding of where one sits. We are leading through in every true honor and graveness, for those are beautifully good and acceptable in the gaze of the Savior our God, who desires all human beings to be saved and to come into a thorough knowledge of truth. For there is one God, one also mediator of God and human beings, a human being, Christ Jesus, the one giving to each a thing to prevent loosening over all the evidence to an occasion itself into which I am placed a herald and an apostle set fast off of, I'm laying forth truth in Christ, I'm not lying, an instructor of ethnicities and persuasion and truth. Certainly, I myself will the men themselves to wish forward in prayer in every spot they occupy, lifting up righteous hands at a space from both a desire to stretch out and a thorough inventorying. Let's keep going. Oh, yeah, but I've said prayer. You, yeah, for our leaders. We have to be praying for our leaders. And you say, well, we have to be praying for everyone. Yes, but we're, we're commanded to pray for our leaders. The men are especially, and we haven't. We have failed in it. Oh, yeah, but I've said prayer. You, yeah, God bless President Trump, you know, or something very short, very shallow, not really thinking through it and praying, like really praying. We must be praying for our leaders because if we don't, we end up with something like the situation that we are in. Exactly. Some things we can pray for concerning the enemy, which is not Biden and Harris, it's the spiritual forces mm -hmm. that are using them. We can pray for confusion among the enemy. Yeah. And for This is very important. This is very critical. These are like marching orders I want to give you in prayer over our leaders, especially coming into this new administration. Okay, this is very critical to take these two things and be praying about it. Here we go. Biden and Harris, it's the spiritual forces that are using them. We can pray for confusion among the enemy mm -hmm. and for arguing among the enemy mm -hmm. so that their plans are not completed. One yep. thing we can do is pray against the enemy. And we're not talking about Biden and Harris no. because the enemies are the forces, the spiritual forces behind them. They are going to want to try, transact some plans against us and our social values, our moral values. And we need to pray for confusion among the enemy and no. for arguing between the enemies so that they can't accomplish their purposes. Those two things especially the Lord has impressed on my heart that we are to pray for that those things happen to the enemy so that they cannot accomplish their purposes. May the Lord bless you as you seek him with all your heart. On January 6th. Yes, may the Lord bless you as you seek him with all your heart. Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them, and we try to respond to all. Get on over to our website, The Rooted Word, and start reading the translation and also the articles that we've posted. It's at therootedword.com, therootedword.com. And may the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.